Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So over the weekend I went to my cousin's baby shower and me and my cousins had an interesting conversation about our secondary school years and how difficult it was being dark skinned and I'm sure many dark skinned women can relate to growing up and feeling invisible, always being the brunt of many jokes and always being compared to like your lighter skinned friend or lighter skinned sister and so on. One thing that kept reoccurring during that conversation is that when we were all voicing our experiences with colorism, all of our stories involved black men typically being the perpetrators. Now, before I continue, this is not an anti-black man video. I promise you, I would never promote the hatred of black men on my channel because let's face it, if I did, my channel would be a lot more successful. But yeah, I would never ever promote the hatred of black men. This is just me vocalizing my experiences with colorism and unfortunately based off of my experience it was mainly black men perpetrating that level of bitterness and detestation towards me so with one of my cousins she primarily dates white men she still finds black men attractive she still likes black men she's dated black men before but she by and large dates white men. She's never bashed black men in my presence, especially in an attempt to try and justify her interest in white men. She's just silently dated white men and gone about her business. However, the conversation that we had over the weekend was a real eye opener. And I feel like based off of what she had revealed to us in terms of the colorism that she was subjected to, I can't help but think that the trauma that surfaced as a result of those experiences somewhat influenced her dating choices today and why she predominantly dates white men. Now, that's not what today's video is about. During the conversation, one of my cousins made an interesting point. She said, now we're living in a time where lighter skinned women and biracial women are now accepting that they have privilege and are now acknowledging that colorism is a thing. But when she was growing up, lighter skinned women never acknowledge their privilege we're, we were essentially trying to make sense of why it has taken this long for lighter skinned women to admit that not only is there colorism but they benefit from it and I guess it's because a lot of light skinned women felt personally victimized by dark skinned women too so that triggered me to make a video evaluating whether or not light skinned slash biracial women can experience colorism as well so who are the main perpetrators of colorism most might say both dark-skinned men and light-skinned women are the fortifiers of colorism, but anyone really can perpetuate colorism. And yes, even dark-skinned women. Because in the media, we're constantly bombarded with stories and tweets involving dark-skinned men attacking dark-skinned women and light-skinned women doing very little to check this type of behaviour, it can be very easy for dark-skinned women to believe that both dark-skinned men and light-skinned women have it out for them. I just want to make something clear. There is nothing wrong with uplifting light-skinned women at all. I think light-skinned women are very beautiful and very gorgeous. However, I found, and many others, have found that light-skinned women get praised at the expense of dark-skinned women. Not even just in terms of just dating preferences. I mean, we see it all the time in the media. There's this belief in the black community that once a black man makes it out of poverty, then the first thing that he does is shack up with a non-black woman. Kanye West even rapped about it in his song Gold Digger. It's one thing to partner up with a non-black woman, but then to attack black women, dark-skinned ones at that, just to justify your preference, is, it's insane. And a lot of the times these preferences are rooted in self-hatred, not because they generally like these non-black women. Unfortunately, these non-black women aren't able to see that and just take the compliment completely neglecting the fact that his preference for her is rooted in the disdain for the alternative option, which is dark-skinned woman. What's even more funny is that a lot of light-skinned women slash biracial women will have a clue or an idea that the black man that they're entertaining hates dark-skinned women, but will contentedly date them anyways, thinking that they'll get a different result. I don't know, maybe it's because these women see black women as a threat and I guess dating a black man who hates black women eliminates the competition. I don't know. In the famous case of Danny Lay, who thought that it would be funny to make that colorist song to taunt the baby's other child's mother only for him to then turn around and call her a side chick, 
I mean, there are many stories in the media where these non-black women, specifically light-skinned slash biracial women, end up having to deal with the same trashery that these colorist black men supply to black women. So it turns out that they're doing us a favor. They're helping us out more than they know. But anyway, because our attention is mainly geared toward calling out colorist black men and colorist light-skinned women slash biracial women, we tend to overlook ways in which white people perpetuate colorism as well. I can give you many examples of white people choosing biracial people to be the face of what they deem to be the acceptable black people. We're always seeing biracial people break through barriers and entering white spaces before black people. If you look at television shows surrounding black families, the husband is always dark skinned, the mother is always light skinned or biracial, the son is always dark skinned and the daughter is always light skinned. You cannot tell me that this isn't intentional. Can light-skinned women be victims too? Yes, I definitely think that light-skinned women can be victimised by dark-skinned women too, which, you know, can I just say now, is unacceptable. I've heard stories of light-skinned women who have voiced being picked on by dark-skinned women because they're, quote, jealous. And I'll get to that point in a minute, but yes, just because you're light-skinned doesn't mean you can't experience some sort of pain. However, that doesn't negate the fact that light-skinned women benefit from colorism. I remember when they made the Dark Skin Girls documentary and I was like, finally, a space where dark-skinned women can voice their pain without fear of censorship or being told that we're over-exaggerating or that we're just jealous. And then they made the Light Skin Girl documentary. And, I, you know, don't get me wrong. I do believe that light-skinned women are also dealing with pain that deserves to be recognized as well. But again, they benefit from colorism and are favoured a lot of the times, and are chosen over dark-skinned women. When they made the Dark Skin Girl documentary, I felt like it was a case of, okay, dark-skinned woman, you've had your five minutes, now it's light-skinned woman's turn. And it's like, but it's always their turn. What I noticed in the Light Skin Girl documentary is that not only did it divert attention away from dark-skinned women who were the real victims of colorism, but it played into the evil dark-skinned woman who picked on the light-skinned girl because she was jealous narrative. Again, I understand that light-skinned women slash biracial women's experiences should also be taken into consideration and shouldn't be ignored. But... I guess what I'm trying to say is, why can't it for once it just be about dark-skinned women? Why can't we have our own space where we can express our feelings without having to share the spotlight with other women of colour, without people invalidating our experiences or without deflection? Why can't it, for once, it just be our time? Now to answer the question of the video, can lighter skin women slash biracial women experience colourism? Short answer, no. Colourism in many ways is just like racism, just with skin tone. Colorism is a systemic issue and it's more than just the boys rejected me because I was dark skin and went for my lighter skin friend. No, it's past that point. Society says that lighter skin women are more prettier, more intelligent, more feminine, which does come with its advantages. Sure, there are some negative connotations associated with light skin women, but their privilege just can't be denied. So using the jealousy argument to try and dismiss your privilege is just, yeah, no. This might be shocking for most to hear, but I feel like we should humanise people whilst holding them accountable. It can be hard as a dark-skinned woman to humanise colorist black men and colorist light-skinned women, just colorist people in general when you're constantly at the brunt of many jokes. We should be checking anyone who makes colorist statements, regardless of where you stand on the spectrum, make them understand that by them making these damaging statements, not only does it cause trauma, but that essentially makes you an agent of white supremacy. Now, I don't believe every single black man is a colorist, nor do I believe every single light-skinned woman is a colorist, or anybody in general is a colorist by nature, but I do believe that we were all brainwashed by white supremacy and need to take the appropriate steps in terms of moving forward. I also think that the men need to have an honest conversation about how colorism has affected them so they don't further perpetuate the cycle but anyway, guys, thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And please comment down below what you think about this entire situation. Now, I know this video might ruffle a few feathers. But again, if you're triggered by a video that's just quite simply calling out certain people's privileges, then I don't know. That kind of speaks volumes about you as a person. But anyway, guys, thanks for listening. Bye.